Lydia. I'm a production director at KVRX, and I think I'm here to pick a library? So I'm a little bit infamous around here uh, for being completely obsessed with the Modest Mouse in-studio session uh, that was recorded at KVRX in the year 2000. Um, it contains, like, completely different interludes that are, like, really atypical to Modest Mouse's style. And it was also, like, kind of demo-y versions of tracks off of the Moon in Antarctica, which is my favorite album of theirs, like, Tattoo Coming Soon, like, favorite album of theirs. Um, they also have uh, interesting little goofs um, title, with titles such as um, Monkey and uh, Talking About His Sweaty Shirt and Naked, question mark, and uh, Village, which he says, look, there's a little village in here and it's thriving. Um, so just like weird little things Isaac Brock says. Um, it's really cute. There's uh, also, just like as production director, I'm particularly interested with the studio sessions that were recorded here since that's what I do here. Um, and here is Juju, another one of my favorite artists, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Um, A.V. Terra and Panda Bear also doing some kind of demo-y versions. Like, they did um, a song that ended up being on some tongs. It ended, uh, it was the softest voice, but at the time they called it, like, You'll Be All Right or something like that. And the lyrics were completely different, but all the instrumentation was the same, which was pretty cool. Also, a Broken Social Scene in 2003 did a unreleased, completely original, like, jam. It was, like, seven minutes long or something. And started it off by saying, this one goes out to Willie Nelson. So there's just, like, a lot of really special gems um, on KBRX Studio Sessions. So proud to be a part of that. It's pretty cool. But uh, speaking of Juju earlier, uh, my favorite album of theirs is A Promise, which was released in 2003. Um, my favorite track on it is Ian Curtis' Wishlist, which is supposed to be like a, an emulation of what may have been a real or a fictional um, fan letter that was written to Jamie Stewart. Um, and one of the lyrics just screams like, do you love me, Jamie Stewart? And there's this like really choppy kind of audio process that was done on the vocals that I find particularly fascinating. I think it's kind of like... 80s snare gated reverb that's really typical of that time period but like on vocals so it sounds like really haunting and choppy and like it was recorded on like maybe someone's like cassette like little cassette recorder or something like that like it probably wasn't but it, it just had a really cool effect and there's a lot of really sad and uncomfortable stories in this album and just like a lot of it um just as far as the audio goes um, even just completely instrumental parts of it, I think does, uh, they do a lot of really like scary storytelling, just um, even with instrumentation. And I think that music that can make people uncomfortable and create that kind of tension is just like really artistically valuable to me. It's a really cool experimental record and Juju is great. So um, oh, this one is like completely different stylistically. This is Austin's own Ringo Death Star. This is Pure Mood, which was their 2016 album um and i don't really know like if this is like a hot take or what but like i don't know if it's my favorite album of theirs but it's just like super excellent even though it's like their most recent one people are like oh the old stuff's better but i don't know i think this is really good it kind of holds a special place in my heart since whenever i moved to austin from uh appalachia georgia um this was kind of one of the first artists that led me to fall in love with shoegaze and dream pop whenever i didn't really know much about like different niche genres of music um and like uh, one of the tracks on it guilt um kind of like took me through a difficult time and helped me like scream sing out my problems a little bit um and it's just like a really like ethereal a uh, beautiful dream pop album from Austin's Austin natives. So that's nice to have. Um, and this is Destroyer's Rubies by Destroyer. Um, and I honestly don't know a ton about Destroyer's history as an artist. I kind of recently, like two weeks ago, became obsessed with this album, even though it came out in 2006. Um, there's just like a really uh, fascinating, I don't even know his name. What, what's the lead singer's name? Dan Behar. Dan Behar, cool. Um, he's got, thank you. Uh, he's, he's got like a, just a really unique 
um, just unique vocals um, that I, f I find really nice to listen to. Um, and the person, uh, self-described hysterical bookish fangirl Kate G, reviewed uh, in February of 2006, um, described him as a real writer's songwriter. Um, which the lyricism, I usually am not like a super lyr lyrically, like I don't get super caught up on lyrics really, um, but there's this one lyric on the track, um, Painter in Your Pocket. Um, it goes, it's, it was 2002 and you needed reminding to stay alive, but so did I, but at least I tried to fall on that sword and never look back. Um, and I remember the first time I listened to this, I was kind of like, like, that's such a excellent lyric and I'm really like put into um this story excellent storyteller um that Behar now that I know his name um but I don't know I guess that's that's all that I gotta say about all of that uh, um 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 uh, um it goes um that's right my name was Lydia these were my library picks um, be sure to tune into Local Life every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for a local Texas act in our very own studios. That's right. Every week. We've been doing it for 22 years. It's good stuff. Says a lot about what we believe at KBRX and uh, what's special about the Texas music scene. Uh, we're on Facebook. Thank you very much. Thanks.